Another crazy week of BattleBots, week nine of the regular season. TCC's number one ranked and BattleBots' is number one ranked robots fought in the main event. We had an amazing number three and number four slot fight. The Western Allied Robotics Civil War lived up to the hype. Florida versus Florida in fight one was really good. And of course, Ripperoni, my favorites this year. They're still doing awesome. We're talking about all that and more, as always, on another weekly BattleBots rundown here at the Combat Collective. Welcome to another episode here at the Combot Collective, bringing everything you want to know about the 2022 BattleBots World Championship 7th season. And I'm your host, as always, Sterling Brown, aka Sterling TXTG, Query to 300, former third law sports writer and current BattleBots subreddit moderator. Week 9 is here. We are almost two thirds of the way done with the 2022 BattleBots World Championship regular season. About halfway through round three, and it looks like a lot of my predictions I did make for um, the third round of the regular season from that prior stream that we did, they're coming true. Uh, we've also had a couple of surprises, though. We're going to be talking about all of that. As I mentioned, the Midway Major, a fantastic fight between two desperate robots. The Western Allied Robotic Civil War lived up to the hype. We had our first ever judge's decision appeal. I'm certainly going to have some thoughts about that. And a match that certainly should have had much more potential. You know which one I'm talking about. We're going to be kicking it off, though, with the Florida versus Florida match. Witch Doctor versus Gruff. But before that, as always here at the Combot Collective, we are sponsored by RobotsAreInMyLife.com. You can check out their link in the description below. They are the merchandise provider for numerous robot combat teams in the East Coast. BattleBots teams such as Omega Team with Ripperoni and Starchild. Shredder Bro, who we're going to be seeing fight in during Week 10 with, well, Shredder Bro. And then, of course, NHRL Robots. Watch out for our stream March 18th before NHRL and after NHRL. Robots like Blackbird, the Three Pound Shredder Bro, Wake and Bake, among numerous other robots, Hurt Caboose, Hyperdrive, all represented under Robots Room My Life's banner, along with their own logo merchandise. Check out their awesome stuff t shirts, prints, uh, buttons, poker chips, even pizza boxes. You can buy it all right there. And if you're a team looking for a merchandise partner, talk to them too. But now let's get to week nine robot combat action here at the Combat Collective. And just like pizza, this first fight was pretty hot. Week 9 kicks off with a fight between two robots and teams you may be surprised to hear have fought in the past. Ram Robotics with Gruff and Busted Nuts Robotics with Witch Doctor are two of the most active and consistent Florida mainstays since the late 2000s. But these two storied robots first met at the Sportsman Heavyweight Competition during Orlando Maker Fair 2016. Gruff showed up with its usual form while Witch Doctor, complying with his event sportsman rules, had swapped out their blade for a pair of coals and wheels. This, of course, gave Gruff a big time advantage. It won the fight with ease, but that was almost seven years ago now. And of course, the full combat battle box, it's a completely different story compared to that robot ruckus arena. And uh, of course, with that factor, Gruff entered this fight with a little bit of added defense. Two front wedges that we've seen work pretty well in the past, but this time we would watch that left wedge get shot straight into the ceiling by Witch Doctor within seconds of the fight starting, shaking the arena cameras into progress. It must have been a big time hit, and this rough start led to some stress. Shaky driving by Sam McCamus, who would go 0-3 on lift attempts, while Witch Doctor, second by second, was making Gruff look more like Harvey Dent, focusing on that now exposed left side of Gruff with a barrage of huge armor-ripping blows. But really, the signature moment of this fight would be that vicious impact to Gruff's flame tank happened just under a minute in. A strike where Witch Doctor would send Gruff straight to hell, as Kenny Florian would say, with the added bonus of taking out its left side drive in the process. From here, it was just two more strikes from Witch Doctor, one ripping off the wedge of Gruff and the other throwing Gruff directly onto the upper deck for a knockout in 1 minute and 35 seconds. And uh, apparently the Witch Doctor team, they played it cautious here with a tank of a robot like Gruff. 
they added those little wedge slits and they lowered their weapon power for this fight but you certainly would have not noticed that with the performance we saw here wish doctor looked nearly untouchable now in three straight fights and now they're heading into an incredibly important final fight of the season versus the also 3-0 minotaur a rematch which will likely decide the tournament top seed Gruff, meanwhile, though, now really had us at the Combat Collective thinking entering this season that they were going to be taking the mantle as Tank of Battlebots with Duck retired, but it's now suffered two KO defeats in this season. Is that really the case? It looked pretty rough versus Witch Doctor and Quantum, so if they want to have any top 32 hopes at 2-2, two two, they need to dominate an inconsistent malice. And speaking of, ah boy, this is going to be an interesting fight to run down. A battle of red and blue. East and West, Horizontal Drum and Undercutter, two female-led crews in Team Malice and Questionable Designs, with Malice and Valkyrie respectively. And Battlebots seriously jumped into this one here. No intro, no pre-fight. Valkyrie ran the Glory Blade for a second straight fight, while Malice used a 55-pound drumstick, plus a little bit of extra added AR-500 armor to the corners of Malice, labeled the Nut Guards, keeping that robot together. But now let's hop into this fascinating fracas. Very technical, very well driven, good aggression by both parties in the opening 43 seconds. And then, well, Malice ripped Valkyrie's weapon off. And this impact changed the whole fight, not only neutering Valkyrie, but also killing Malice's left side drive. And then after a solid strike to Valkyrie's wheel, Malice's weapon too was out of commission. This resulted in an incredibly awkward second half of the fight, with Valkyrie and Malice both down a weapon and a wheel leading to literally no engagement, forcing a double KO to be called, ending this fight 37 seconds early. But in those dying seconds, we would see Malice power up its weapon on momentarily. But as you all know, the story of this fight was all about that judge's decision, or more specifically, the appeal. On a 2-3 split decision, we'd see Derek Young go for Malice, and shockingly, Lisa Winter and Fawn Davis going for Valkyrie. On paper, it just seemed to be all Malice, and quite frankly, should have been unanimous. Love these guys, but one of the goofiest judges' decisions we have seen in the reboot era. So thank God for the new decision appeals, which we finally saw in action here. Buddy Soriol immediately called for an appeal here, and I mean, why not? A Malice took out not only Valkyrie's weapon and wheel, but its own also. And while this does show that Malice still has not fixed these big-time reliability issues, it doesn't explain why Valkyrie won two of the three judges' cards. Now, apparently, according to a post on Reddit, the two judges who picked Valkyrie did not see Malice spin back up. But hey, Derek saw it. I feel like a lot of fans pr present saw it. Maybe even Ray Charles saw it. So I don't know. I mean, in the end of the day, I love these judges. They're absolutely awesome. They are still human and these things will happen. But that's why we have the appeals and the right robot one now because of it. Malice, though, now 2-1, has some playoff hopes with Gruff on deck. But man, that weapon has got to survive versus a brick of a butt. And I'm quite, I'm not sure if they can do it with what we've seen so far this year. And Valkyrie, meanwhile, fights the also struggling glitch in the next round. And quite frankly, who knows how that's going to go. Both those robots are so up and down this year. I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs. We'll just have to see how it goes. But now let's move on forward to a couple of real banger fights here. And I've been hyping it up for weeks. It's time for Western Allied Civil War Part 2. Both of these squads have shared teammates and arenas in numerous West Coast competitions in the past. And Big Dill Captain Emmanuel Carrillo was once even a member of Team Mad Catter going back to 2019. Another quick skip intro here and we cut to the battle box and there's a lot to take in here. Three new mini bots inside the arena at the same time. Looking more like a rumble here than a traditional one-on-one. -on -one. As on Mad Catter's side, we saw Toe Biter, a Tombstone-esque horizontal spinner, and Cat Toy, a Smee-esque pusher with cat toys and a little green toy steel chair on it. While on Big Dill's side, it was the much-awaited debut of Team Dark Force's new minibot, a scaled-up Dark Pounder named Nacho Supreme. And these three little dudes kicked off all the action with the trio all running right at one another while the parents watched on at first and then went right to work with Big Dill taking the lead surprisingly in minute one with the Washington robot having the ground advantage. Big Dill managed to throw Toe Biter out of the arena and rip off one of Mad Catter's wedges but that would be about it in minute one. Mad Catter would clap back during the final two minutes delivering numerous brutal strikes with that heavy jolt weapon bar their heaviest weapon in their arsenal mangling Big Dill's lifter, ripping off one of Big Dill's wheels, and even forcing some smoke out of the green robot within the final minute. 
So with that, the fight lived up to the hype big time, and Mad Catter wins on a unanimous judge's decision, getting back on track. But hey, shouts to all the minibots here. Two of the three made it through the full battle, and Nacho Supreme from Team Dark Forces was like an angry chihuahua, diving into the much bigger Mad Catter like it was a heavyweight itself. No fear shown by any of these five machines, and Big Dill again looked incredibly impressive early on. But just like in that Scorpius fight, this robot suffered a decline as the fight continued. It was gradual and really aggressive at some points, and that has to be frustrating for a team food fight as they are now 0-3, entering what feels like a nothing battle with free shipping. That has to be frustrating for them. And meanwhile, on Mad Catter's side, they're back on track at 2-1, and one, and they now must face another similar design in Lockjaw. A win here could put Mad Catter in the upper half of tournament seating. Oh, yeah. Midway measure time, and it's two green machines currently sitting at 0-2. Both were undefeated in the 2021 regular season, with Jackpot being the original holder of reputation of never losing in the qualifiers, and its opponent, Ribot, our original defending number two seed from that season, and now both are in dire straits, and whichever robot loses here most likely won't be in this year's top 32. Reportedly, both of these teams did also meet at the live events between Battle Boss 2021 and 2022, but I don't know exactly where this fight would have taken place. If someone is more aware of this meeting, please leave something in the comments. I would love to know, but regardless, for this fight, Team Ribot was quite worried about the signature weapon reach that Jackpot is known to have, so the team finally decided to bring back the undercutter setup for this round, which in my opinion should have been present for those last two fights. Jackpot, meanwhile, returns from round two, still armed with that heartbreaker blade, but now without those anti-horizontal spinner Twin Peaks plows that subbing out that weight for their minibot Ace instead. Sadly though, for Ace, that minibot was certainly not long for this world. Strong start by Ribot here, three hard hits to Jackpot, and then a one-hit KO strike to Ace before Ribot would then lose a wheel to the hometown machine. And then another wheel a few short minutes later on the same side. From here, the one-legged robot could still sort of move, and it tried to play some offense. But Jeff Waters would exhibit some non-aggressive driving here with Jackpot whilst approaching Ribot, showing respect to the frog while anxiously attacking it twice more before time was up. With Ribot winning the first exchange, but Jackpot really taking it to WPI with the second, a strike which killed Jackpot's drive but also almost knocked Ribot out, who while leaking some oily substance by the kill saws managed to just, I mean just move out of circumference and make this fight a judge's decision. And Jackpot, despite the lack of aggression at some points, would manage to still pick up the W here, Moving it to a decent enough 1 and 2, while Ribot becomes a shock 0 and 3, a perfect mirror to their 3 and 0 2021. Vegas Combat Robotics probably happy to have a win here, but I'm still not sold on this new jackpot. The lifting forks were once again up for over 95% of the battle, and even though at least we at least saw that Shremek finally be used properly this time, still a lot of improvement to be made there. I'm also not quite impressed with Jeff Waters driving here either. The two strikes which de-wheeled Ribot felt more like lucky impacts than anything which Jackpot did. And I also am quite confused on why they left Ribot pretty much just sitting there prone for such a long time. Felt like a missed opportunity. Jackpot though faces Shredderator up next. So maybe we can still see the Vegas machine make the top 32. Ribot though, maybe not so lucky. TCC co-host and Ribot head Pori Nog did crunch some numbers and he said that maybe there's some room for some 1 and 3s to make the playoffs. Might be wishful thinking, only time will tell, but hey, at least blood sports there for Pori Nog to cheer for if all things go south, right? But now we dive into fight five, and oh boy, time we cook Scorpius for this one. This fight had the same hype and anticipation behind it in the same way as battles like Beat Up vs. Shatter, Gigabyte vs. Shredderator had, and well, we kind of knew this was coming. We learned almost a month ago on the Green Square Talks BattleBots podcast that Zack Lytle will be bringing out an inverse overkill blade for this fight, as opposed to the hammer saw we were all hoping to see. Zack's hopes was that Scorpius would replicate what shattered the blacksmith in 2021 with the Mary Special, breaking the weapon blade, maybe even breaking the weapon itself. But Sawblades, meanwhile, had plenty of time to prepare for this hard to hide weapon, as it added big two UHMW panels to protect Sawblades from any potential blade impacts. Much like the hype for this fight, though, this one died out mercifully quick. And it's kind of a bummer, but hey, that's just how combat sports go sometime. 
That overkill blade was big, beautiful, but good lord, it was a mess. Scorpius was wheeling all over the arena with minimal control, only managing to land one of its three blade attack attempts, and it didn't even matter. Sawblaze had its weapon turned off, so the belt would be perfectly fine, and quite frankly, that overkill blade was coming down slower than that hammer the 2019 version of Jasper had. After the three Scorpius swings, Sawblaze would slam Scorpius into the screws, flipping it over and killing it without even using that hammer saw once, but hey, didn't stop Scorpius from going three for three on strikes with it, even busting that overkill blade in the process, with shades of Mo versus overkill and 4.0 being shown with the impact. Sawblaze squashes Scorpius in 49 seconds, and even though Team Botbash did say it was a builder's poll that decided which Scorpius setup would enter for this fight, I'm going to say, no Johns here, boys. A bad call is a bad call. The weapon came down slow. It was awkward. It was lumbering. And don't get me wrong, we all wanted to see the OG overkill blade in action, but I'm pretty sure this was the last robot any of us wanted to see it be used against. I mean, even Chris and Kenny, guys who are pretty damn good about playing things unbiased, could not help but express their frustration and disappointment with this play. It really did feel like a missed opportunity. Hopefully this one comes up in the arena again soon, maybe in the playoffs, maybe during next year's fight cards. But for now, Scorpius sits at 2-1 with the 0-3 Ribot on deck. Sawblaze, meanwhile, 3-0, safe for the playoffs, but now has a main event level war with the 2-1 Hydra up next. All right, you know what time it is. Fight number six is a bit of a wild card fight. You really never know what's going to be in that slot, but this week it was all about glass cannon, vertical spinner versus glass cannon, horizontal spinner. Two wild designs and Ripperoni from New England and Hijinx from California, both trying to become two and one. Hijinx for a third straight fight would bring out their shortest but heaviest blade with a strategic focus on using the tail primarily, being conservative with the blade. While in the Ripperoni camp, the team was surprisingly anxious about this fight and wanted to play it with caution. So a mega team would bust out their final available Ripperoni configuration, the Calzone and anti-horizontal plow for this one. And you know, it's funny. I talked about all that buildup with strategies just now, caution and planning on both offbeat robotics and Omega team here, but yet they seem to throw it all right out the door immediately. Both robots spun those weapons right up to full speed and drove directly into each other and boom! Ripperoni opened with a massive strike to Hijinx. Shades of uppercut versus Hijinx in 2020 as in one single strike, Hijinx weapon was dead and the tail wedge was completely neutered. The robot itself, though, miraculously was moving fine, and the hijinks would attempt to continue to be aggressive with what was left of the tail. But sadly for hijinks, Ripperoni's onslaught just kept on coming, strike after strike. It eventually bullied hijinks into the corner where a fire began to break out within the Oakland Owl. Ripperoni then de-winged hijinks, tearing away the left and right panels, exposing the internals on hijinks, but more importantly, finishing it off here with a knockout at 1 minute 41 seconds right by the arena door for easy drop-off delivery. You like Owl on your pizza? It's apparently roasted. Ripperoni wins another here, and this robot seems to just be getting stronger with greater consistency every fight, while Hijinx stock is falling like a rock, and at 1 and 2, it is now in danger of missing the playoffs for the first time in its career. Its last remaining opponent is a robot with a similar position in Switchback. There's likely only room in the playoffs for one of these machines. We're going to have to watch out for that one. Ripperoni, meanwhile, they're making us at the Combat Collective proud. I love the lollipop drill guy. I obviously love the pizza bling guy. But what I don't love is our next opponent, Copperhead, who's well on their way to a potential undefeated season. I like to see Ripperoni do good. I want to see them win it. You know, but it's Copperhead. They're a scary robot. But hey, you got to celebrate somehow. Mm. Tell you what, fucking beats a Subway sandwich. But now it's main event time. Two top tier four wheel drive vertical spinners and maybe a battle to see which 2021 2022 rankings is the best because it's Balbot's number one ranked endgame facing Combat Collective's number one ranked Hypershock. Both sat at 1 1 entering this fight. And this, of course, is a rematch from the third round of the 2020 regular season, a fight where soon to be champion Endgame took out the at the time struggling Hypershock in less than a minute nearly killing Kenny Florian in the process. But since then, Endgame has acquired a giant nut and a giant bolt, while Hypershock has since become an all-star champion. So a lot more prestige and experience now on both ends. And Endgame, shockingly enough, enters this fight, bringing back those clown shoes longforts for a second round. But this time, 
decently enough in a more respectable, more reasonable configuration with a wall of piano keys lying the two main forks. And then on Hypershock's end, keeping it traditional with their vertical spinner setup, a Drisk with two big wedges on deck for this rematch. Entering this fight, Hypershock had the weapon weight and dry power advantage, but Endgame was historically the more consistent, something which played a big factor here, as while the result took a little bit longer this time, it was once again Endgame from start to finish. The Kiwi struck with a vicious opening strike to Hypershock, one which flipped our number one ranked robot over and forced it into a corner corral position temporarily, but some solid driving by Will Bills did allow Hypershock to escape as Hypershock then attempted to reset, but the following strike from Endgame may have even been more brutal than the first. This one threw Hypershock almost seven feet high with the front wheel flying off in the process. The violent exchange also broke off a fork on Endgame, but the New Zealand crew stayed in control, laying in three more strikes, including one more massive one to end it all here. This one ripped off the other front wheel in Hypershock, which forced one of the bounciest heavyweights in the sport to well somehow, some way, do the thing. Hypershock miraculously gets stuck on its side in 2 minutes, 37 seconds, and Endgame moves to 2 and 1. It seems that oh yes, Robotics, no matter the robot, is a massive kryptonite to Hypershock. First it was Krusty Krab beating it in 2019, then Endgame knocking it out in under a minute in 2020, and now Endgame stranding it in 2022. A freak KO win here for the international favorite, who at 2 and 1 is safe, I'd say, for the playoffs, and with a seriously struggling gigabyte on deck in round 4, it almost feels like a buy round for Endgame here, to be honest. I hate to say it. I love Gigabyte, but geez, it's been tough for them this year. Hypershock, meanwhile, my pick to win this damn thing at the start of the year could very well be the surprise underdog now versus the 3 0 Claw Viper around four while sitting at one and two. A loss here, and I hate to say it, but Hypershock's out of the playoffs. But with a win here, I'd say they sneak into the bracket one more year in that 20 plus seating position. And maybe from there, they can go on to a big championship run. Maybe keep my predictions true. We're just going to have to see how it goes. But that's going to do it here. Seven fights up, seven fights down. This was a very entertaining episode. A lot of big talking point moments from the Scorpius Blade incident to the judges' appeals to some big rivalry fights like Oh Yes Robotics against Team Hypershock, Western Allied Robotics Civil War, which really lived up to the hype. Big Bill's best fight ever, potentially, I'd say. All the mini bots look great there, but we already went all over about that. Malice versus Valkyrie was a very interesting battle. We knew it was going to be crazy. We knew it was going to be destructive. I don't think anyone expected that result. Shouts to all the judges. I know they're going to get a lot of flack this week. I know I gave them a little flack just now, um, but we still love our judges. We love Lisa Winter. We know you're subscribed. Our heart belongs to you, but I digress. Shoutouts to Witch Doctor as well. The main event versus Minotaur coming up is going to be very good. Speaking of main event, next week main event, going to be very exciting. Monsoon finally getting to appear in a Battle Boss main event for the first time in its career against Whiplash. Whiplash loses here. They're not going to make the playoffs. That's going to be tough. Other exciting matches are going to happen on that episode. We're going to get to see Riptide again. We're going to get to see Ominous again finally. But we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here at the Combot Collective. I'm your host, as always, Sterling Brown. You can find me on Instagram at SterlingTXTG. We are sponsored by RobotsRoomMyLife.com. And I mentioned this right now because I forgot to bring up our giveaway. We do a giveaway every two weeks here at the Combot Collective during the BattleBots regular season. We've given away hex bug ducks. We've given away tote bags. And if you saw it last week, we are giving away a wake and bake NHRL t-shirt. It is medium size. I feel like I meant, forgot to mention that last week. It is medium size. I don't have any other size. It's just a medium. Someone was asking about it, so I felt like it had to be said. But yes, if you're looking to check out that giveaway, that's also going to be in the description below, along with all of our other social media links, our Instagram and Facebook, also in the description below. Join our Discord server. We have robot combat content creators. We have robot combat builders from the UK and the US all in the server. All of our video and news updates go there first. Check it out. And then as always, you're right here on the YouTube page. If you like the video, please leave a comment. Give us your thoughts about episode nine. Give us your constructive criticism. And if you really, really liked it, hey, subscribe, please. Ring the bell icon. We try to bring content here weekly. We got more news videos, more event rundowns coming down the pipeline. So check it out. We have a live stream till the 18th of March. That's gonna be big for NHRL. Let's get you out of here. I'm your host, as always, Sterling Brown, and we will see you next time here at the Combat Collective.
This was the Combat Collective. I'm the hardest card ram, and this color.